My name is Corey Kuzma. I'm a software developer at Nationwide Children's Hospital. I'll be talking about the variation normalizer. To begin, there are many different ways to represent the same variation concept, such as free text, HTBS, Nomad VCF, or Speedy. You can also represent them using centralized authoritative IDs, such as canonical Leo IDs, ClinVar, RCV IDs, and DBSNP IDs. Translating between these different formats can lead to variant ambiguity in knowledge bases and can be labor intensive. These problems can lead to the inability to easily exchange variation data between systems and can create errors or inefficiencies in the evaluation of variation in clinical settings. These issues are addressed through the use of the variation representation specification and verse added tools for interoperable loquacious exchange framework from GA4GH. The verse models, globally unique computed identifiers, and fully justified allele normalization algorithm provide a standard computable mechanism for precise and unambiguous representations of molecular and systemic variation. The virtual framework provides support for the practical exchange of verse variation data. We've developed the Variation Normalizer, an open source Python package in REST API to translate human readable variation descriptions to verse and virtual compatible representations. Here you can see many different ways to represent the same variation concept. The Variation Normalizer is able to return a single variation descriptor object with the same verse variation. The Variation Normalizer supports HGVS, free text, and Nomad VCF queries. The Variation Normalizer works in four main steps tokenization, classification, validation, and translation. For example, given the query BRFV600E, we first split the string on white space to get the tokens. We use gene normalizer, which allows us to normalize gene concepts and regex checks to determine the kinds of tokens. We can determine that BRF is a gene symbol token and V600E is an amino acid substitution token. We then classify the token to determine the kind of variation. We see that protein substitution requires a gene symbol and amino acid substitution token in this order, which we have. So we can classify BRF V600E as a protein substitution. It does not get classified as a protein insertion since we do not have an amino acid insertion token. We then get all protein accessions associated to the gene symbol BRAF using UTA tools. UTA tools allows us to gain access to biocommons resources such as seq repo, which provides fast access to sequence data, as well as the Universal Transcript Archive database, which stores alignment data. UTA tools also stores data for RefSeq, Ensemble, and Main. We then do validation checks on these accessions, such as making sure that the position 600E exists on the accession and checking that the reference allele sequence is as expected. For example, you can see that the first accession found V at position 600, which is what we expected, so it's valid. The second is invalid since we found T at position 600, which is not what we expected, so it's invalid. Finally, we translate all valid results to verse or versatile compatible representations. In the normalized endpoint, we want to return a single normalized variation concept, and to do so, we have an internal algorithm in UTA tools for selecting a transcript. First, we select the uh, First, we map the starting annotation layer to genomic. Second, we lift over to the preferred DRCH38 assembly. Third, we select the preferred compatible annotation with the following priority, main select, then main plus clinical, and then longest, command, longest compatible remaining transcript. Lastly, we map back to the starting annotation layer. We also have an internal algorithm for representing HEBS duplications and deletions. Duplications represented as HTBS expressions mean tandem duplications, but this standard is not always followed in practice. So the normalized endpoint takes an optional HTBS dupe del mode parameter. Here I will describe the default mode. If baseline copies are not set and endpoints are ambiguous, it's a relative copy number variation. If the relative copy class is not provided, then the relative copy class is partial loss for deletions or low level gain for duplications. If baseline copies are provided, then it's an absolute copy number variation, and the copies attribute is as followed. Baseline copies plus one for duplications, and baseline copies minus one for deletions. If the length of the duplication or deletion is greater than 100 base pairs, then it's an allele with a repeated sequence expression with a derived sequence expression as its subject. If none of these conditions are met, then it's an allele with a literal sequence expression. Thank you for listening.